Okay, guys, I'm just going to give you some... Oh, let's just talk about what we're going to do here for this e-learning. Hope everybody's doing well. I am hanging in. This is our office uh, that you're going to be stuck in. It's a hole in my basement down here. It's got a few things in the back as a boron. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a John F. Kennedy poster. And, of course, I have my computer down here. So um, hope you are all doing well. Um, hold up in your house. Uh, I think uh, uh, we made the right decision after watching, you know, all the news and everything. I think we made the right decision, and I hope you guys are feeling good um, and at least trusting that it'll all work itself out in the laundry. Um, I uh, tr will try to send you a video every day, just give you background on what we're going to do. So for my part of the class, um, we had just started the... Um, short stories. So you did James Thurber and um, we covered the catbird seat. So on that, on that particular short story, we talked about sort of like women during World War II as they're entering into the workforce. And then I'm just going to pick up with that and we're going to, not with women, but with short stories. And we're going to try to hit some of the classic writers. You'll recognize some of them. Hemingway, Fitzgerald, Faulkner, um, Steinbeck, James Baldwin, Richard Wright, a lot of uh, dead men will do a couple of women um, and then sort of look at uh, the short stories pretty much between the 1920s and about the 1950s. So that's where I'm headed. The other thing that I'm going to teach you is we'll go through your grammar just in case you're taking the SAT, ACT, although I think that the SAT in Illinois may be canceled, so just expect that to occur, but you're still going to be taking it to get into college at some point, so there you have it. All right, so um, I'm just going to give you some background of what I know about Ernest Hemingway and then talk about what you need to know for the first part of the assignment, which is going to be to read in another country, which I posted on Google Classroom last week, and then I put some study questions on there. So um, your homework is going to be to read in another country and do the study questions. You're going to type the study questions up and email them to me so that I can uh, grade them. I will. I, I know there's a rumor going around that people aren't taking grades. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm taking grades. So many of you need your grades to go up. Some of you don't want them to go down, but just, you know, do the homework and we'll be fair and we'll get through it all, all right? So things I know about Ernest Hemingway, his date's 1899 to 1961. Hemingway was born in Chicago. He's an Illinoisian or Illinoisian or whatever Horner calls it. Um, he actually went to Oak Park High School, um, was a college athlete. His parents raised him to be a manly man. He was a hunter, a fisherman, and in fact, they took uh, trips up to Michigan uh, every summer for him to, to I guess, hone those skills uh, to make sure that he was very manly. When he graduated from high school, he wanted to join World War I. Um, he wanted to enlist. The problem was that Hemingway also boxed during his high school years, and he got an eye injury, got hit in the eye, and they wouldn't let him enlist. So he uh, ended up taking a job at the Kansas City Star, where he was a war correspondent. They sent him over to the war, and um, he ended up hooking up, not, not that kind of hooking up, but hooking up in Italy with an Italian um, like ambulance driving, a driver group. I don't know what you would call them, but they uh, maybe it's like uh, not a core, but a, um, um, a, I can't think of the word, smaller group, like a regiment, if you will. And they were picking up bodies during World War I. And while he was doing this, Covering the war, working with them, he got a knee injury and pretty much just put him out, and the war was getting close to ending anyway. So he ended up recuperating in a hospital after this injury. He had about 12 or 13 surgeries to try to rehab this injury, and while he was there, um, he met a nurse, fell in love with her, but she ended up sort of like dumping him, or at least not like the um, the relationship didn't didn't go to where he wanted it to go. So he will come back home. Let me see if I've got a date for you. Um, 1921. He um, is in Chicago, and he meets his first wife, Hadley Richardson. I think she's from St. Louis originally, but was living in Chicago. And the two of them fall desperately in love, get married, and that same year they will move to Paris, where Hemingway's with 
the rest of what they call the expatriates. Now, I think you know this because Mrs. Horner covered it, but of course, after World War I, a lot of artsy people settle in Paris, right, um, where there's just free everything, free alcohol, free love, free creativity. So you had people like Fitzgerald, Hemingway, James Joyce, the writer of Ulysses, and one very important woman named Gertrude Stein, who was a poet, but also an editor, and Hemingway met her, and she became the editor of his work, and she helped him, like, create his own style. And I'm gonna save that for just a second and go through that in my next video. So what will happen is, I'm trying to find a date because I wrote it down someplace, 1926, he will write a, the novel, like this is his big breakout novel, called The Sun Also Rises. Now some of you have heard of it before. Gertrude Stein has a little quote at the beginning of the book called You Are a Lost Generation. And it sort of represents all those people after World War I who are lost. They, they have you know, no values. They, many of them are injured. Many of them have lost loved ones. Everybody's been affected. And, you know, no wonder there's so much booze and free love and everything else going on in Paris because it's such a depressing outlook with the number of people who had died. So he will publish in 1926, The Sun Also Rises. And it's the story of, I'm slightly laughing, Jake Barnes, who has been injured. He has a war injury in, um, in a not so nice place and he is unable to make love, but he's in love with a woman named uh, Brett. I can't think of her last name right now, um, but he can't, he, he wants to be with her, but he can't be with her. And so there's a lot of tension in the story, but what will happen in the story is poor Jake um, goes to Spain to see the running of the bulls in Pamplona and Brett is with him, but Brett will meet Pedro Romero, a bullfighter, and will fall in love with him and pretty much just dump good old Jake. And so Jake's heart is crushed because he basically can't fulfill Brett. That's kind of the story. There's all kinds of other things going on. Typically, Hemingway stories have lots of alcohol. Alcohol, I mean, like he lists all the names. Um, two, there's all sorts of women. And three, typically a Hemingway story, the man is the man is the man. They're very manly men. And I'll talk about that in a bit. So actually, he will meet somebody in Pamplona, the running of the bulls, and he will end up having an affair with this woman, will dump Hadley and marry her. And so that will become wife number two. Um, in 1929, he will write a book called A Farewell to Arms. And I'm just giving you quick pieces of the story because it's going to affect what you read. So in A Farewell to Arms, the main hero, Frederick Henry, is an ambulance driver in Italy in World War I. And he will um, have to, the, uh, the war is pushing towards um, his unit. That was the word that I wanted, unit. His, the war is pushing toward his unit. And so um, they have to like, uh, head out so that they're not captured and he will end up being injured in a hospital where a nurse nurses him back to health. Her name is Catherine, Catherine Barkley. And uh, it's been a long time since I've read, read uh, A Farewell to Arms, but he and Catherine fall madly in love. They're constantly trying to like, you know, make sure that they're not being caught and they stay in front of, you know, the advancing soldiers. Um, at one point, Catherine is very, very pregnant, and um, you can hear my dogs in the background barking, and uh, they will go to a hospital for Catherine to give birth, and Frederick goes in, and Catherine, you know, tells him they love each other and all of that, and then Catherine, um, Catherine ends up giving birth to a stillborn child, and it's depressing and sad, but if that's not sad enough, Jake leaves goes to drink because his child is gone. He comes back to the hospital only to find out that Catherine hemorrhaged and died. So he ends up leaving um, the hospital in a pouring rain and that's how the novel ends. Those things are gonna be important. I'll give you one more novel. So if you look at Hemingway's life in the mid 1930s, like 35, 36 to about 39 is the Spanish Civil War and he works as a correspondent again. And then when World War II comes around, he is with a unit that is like 
ahead of the Americans as they land in Normandy and all of that. And he will actually, with his like forward unit, get to Paris before the rest of the Allies, you know, and they're sitting around and finally the Allies come in and liberate everything. Um, while he is in World War II working as a war correspondent, he will meet wife number three, um, I can't, Geldhorn, Geld, I can't remember. She was a St. Louis native as well. Um, but anyway, she was a war correspondent. They fall in love. He has an affair on wife number two. He marries wife number three a bit later. Um, just a couple of other things. 1952, he will write um, and publish a, um, what is it called? The Old Man in the Sea, which was set, he moved back to, uh, he had a home in Cuba, for a while, and uh, also a home in um, whatever the southern Key West, um, Florida, and so he would go back and forth. He ends up writing An Old Man in the Sea in 1952, and in that book, the main character, um, Santiago, um, is a fisherman, and he hasn't caught a fish for like 84 days, and uh, there is a young boy named Man Manolin, and it's been a long time too, Manolin, and he wants to look heroic to Manolin and courageous, um, but he hasn't caught a fish and everybody's making fun of him. But Manolin knows that the old man is a, he's a really good fisherman. So Santiago decides to get in his boat and he goes out. It's been a long time since he caught a fish, but he catches the biggest marlin. It takes him three days to drag this fish in, right? When he finally does get it in, he straps it to the side of the boat. And as he's trying to paddle back uh, toward shore, these sharks are eating it. And by the time he gets to the end and finally gets home, he's got this massive fish. The only thing that's left is the carcass because the sharks got it. So, um, but he's a great hero. And I'm gonna explain that to you in just a bit. So after the Old Man of the Sea in 1952, um, at the end of the year, he receives the Nobel Prize for like his entire body of work. He's considered, you know, one of the greatest writers if you receive a Nobel Prize. And finally in 1961, um, he, oh, he'll end up divorcing, Marty was her name, Marty Geldhorn, I want to say. He'll end up divorcing Marty, and in 1961, um, he uh, has a house in Ketchum, or, or Idaho. He loads a double-barrel shotgun, basically goes up, puts it in his mouth, and blows his brains out. He is not, like, he was a guy who, you know, was a big game hunter and a, uh, African safaris and, you know, like the American playboy, really respected, lived life large, and also died large. So that's kind of Hemingway's story. The next video I'm giving you is the Hemingway hero, and you do need to know it, but I'm going to shut this one off for a second.